the Lord. We thank God for you on this morning. Uh, we had a good time on yesterday. The brothers uh, coming together, breaking bread and fellowship. It was a wonderful time, wonderful event. Uh, and you know what? We had we had close to thirty men. I, I I didn't I didn't really count, but it looked like about thirty men. And I say that to say that God is doing something because the weather was inclement on yesterday. It was snowing. It was sleeting. It was windy. And these brothers pressed their way out because they know it was their reasonable service unto the Lord. And they don't feel they did anything special, but they know that God has been special to them. So we thank God for all the brothers on yesterday. I really had a good time. Food was good. Laughter. Oh, my God. They made me laugh so hard yesterday. I caught a cramp in my, in my side, and I had to walk, walk it out. It was a, I mean, we just had a, we just had a good time in the Lord. We thank God. And we can talk openly as men. Wasn't on Zoom, wasn't on Facebook. It was just men coming together and, you know, being on one accord, knowing that Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is overseeing our lives and that we want our lives improved. And we believe we do that by walking closer with God. We thank the Lord. God has been good. Amen. God, I said, God, if I by myself, thank the Lord, I got at least one. God has been good. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Uh, many, many have fallen asleep. Many have passed away. But look, God has us in the land of the living for a reason. We're not here just to be bench warmers, as we used to call it when I played basketball. A few times I, I rode the pine. But then when I got in the game, I played like I was a starter. No, somebody don't hear me. We thank the Lord. Uh, yeah, it may not be your turn today, but your turn is coming if you just stay faithful. If you stay faithful, you stay trustful in the Lord. That's what we're going to talk about on today. I want you to turn your Bibles to 2 Timothy, first chapter. So good to see everyone here <coughs> on today. Here we go. Get one of those halls right away. I start talking. <laughs> Thank you. Thank the Lord. Just in case, I'm not even going to pop one until I really need it. We thank the Lord. Let us stand for the reading of the word. We have to be faithful unto the Lord. If we're faithful unto the Lord, we can be faithful in other things. Amen? Amen. I said if we be faithful unto God. That's right. We'll be faithful to other things. Oh, my God. There's so much that's going to come at us in the days, weeks, years, months, whatever you want. In the future, we shall see if the Lord allows us to see it. You know what? We're going to come up against some things because the word says many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him out of them all. We're going to start at the first verse of chapter 1. And he reads, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Greatly designed to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which up. is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God had not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Look at somebody say, neighbor. 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 I ain't crazy. I ain't crazy. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner. 
But be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, a holy calling, a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death. Oh, my God had brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Thereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For the which cause I suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. May the church say amen at this amen. time. Amen. You may be seated. Just want to talk to you for a minute. Don't be fearful in faithfulness. Don't be fearful in faithfulness. Don't be fearful in faithfulness. Yeah, I know we've been called. Uh, many are called. Few are chosen. We come into the church and we're in the church house and we're serving uh, the church. We're serving God. We're serving the people. We're doing all these things and we're going through things as we're doing this. And we begin to back away from the things that God has instilled in us what God has put in us. And we began to be less faithful in the things of God. We don't pray sometimes. We don't, we, we, we don't read his word sometimes. We don't talk to God. We don't, we don't come to church as much as we used to. We don't get on the Bible study as much as we used to. All these things begin to happen when we begin to forget what God has put in us. I wish I had somebody this morning. We say that we've been filled with the precious Holy Ghost. We've been filled with the Spirit of God. But we walk haphazardly into situations and we're fearful what we see. The Bible tells us that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And the hearing doesn't come here, it comes here in the inner man. So therefore, we can't walk by the, seat, the sight. We can't walk by the sight. The reason we can't, this is a holy walk. The Christian walk is a holy walk. It is not walking by sight. It's walking by faith and faith in God, not in yourself. I wish I had somebody that feels weak right now. Oh my God, if you do, you got to remember that God is strong. Hallelujah. Sometimes we fear, we're fearful about things we're about to go into or things we're already into. And we begin to back away. But I'm telling you, the more word you put in you, the better outcome you'll have. I'm telling you, everybody goes through. Everybody is challenged in this life. Everybody is awakened some days by trouble. My God, you go to bed with trouble. But if you be faithful, oh my God, in the things of God, God will bring you out on the other side. I know what I'm talking about. If you're faithful to God, my God, and stop being fearful of the things that may not happen or already happen, you still here. My God, all we have to do is be faithful. God is just waiting for us to be yes, faithful. Yes. That's how God moves. He moves through our faithfulness yes. and assuring faith. Take one step and let God take the other step. God is just waiting for some of us to just trust in him and stop reaching out to man and stop depending on the government and stop depending even on yourself because greater he that is in you than he that is in the world. I wish I had a church this morning. My God, the faithfulness that God is looking for us to have, he said, I already put it to you. Paul had to remind his son in the gospel, Timothy, Timothy, you have to continue on. See, even the word Timothy came from the word timid. 
See, he was a young man in the gospel. He was trying to preach to a church and teach to a church of elders. I'm talking about elders in age and in the gospel. But he was the overseer. He was the pastor of the church. I'm talking about the church in Ephesus. Oh my God. Sometimes we know better because God has given us insight through the Holy Ghost. But we let people talk us down, back us up. My God, I stand on the word of God. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stand on the word. Hallelujah. Yeah, we're going to go through, through some things. The Apostle Paul, a prisoner at the time in Rome, when he wrote this letter huh, to his son, huh, Timothy. Huh, my God, he was in that Roman dungeon huh, writing epistles, huh, but yet and still, huh, we can't even read our Bibles. Uh, and we're free to go about everywhere. Huh, we can't even read the Word. Huh, but here's Paul writing, huh, encouraging, but he's behind bars. He's encouraging, he's encouraging those who are free. Those who don't have to run for their lives. Understand, this was Paul's second arrest in Rome. This is, this is a time when most people get arrested or get jailed. They don't want to bother with nobody. They just want people to come see him. Paul was feeling hardship uh, because he was separated from the church uh, but it didn't stop him from encouraging the church I wish I had somebody uh, that was faithful in the things of God uh, and pressing through your situation uh, so you can help somebody look at your neighbor right now and say neighbor all I need is a little help everybody needs a little help but I'm going to tell you, this was around 67 AD. Uh, and not too long after this time, uh, Paul was beheaded for being the champion of not just the Gentiles, uh, but carrying the gospel to all. Uh, Paul wrote uh, this letter to Timothy to encourage him in his ministry. Uh, my God, the primary theme of his letter uh, was to say... Uh, we need to be faithful. We need more faithfulness in the yeah, church. Yeah. He also said, Paul, he Paul said to Timothy, he, he said, I know you're going to come against some hardship and the adversary is going to come at you, but I want you to stand on the word of God. Stand on what your mother and your grandmother put in you long ago. And that is the word of God. See, the reason that some people are so weak, they ain't got no word. You better look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, get into the word so the word will get into you. And when the word gets into you, you will be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. But you got to put on the whole arm of God so you can stand in the last days. Stand right now in the name of Jesus when they come after you, when they talk about you, when sickness hits your body, when your finances are low. Stand and be faithful. Don't be fearful. Stop backing up until you get in a corner. But you got to be like a wild animal that's wounded. You don't want to back a wild animal in a corner because when he is wounded, Guess what? He's going to strike out at you. Some of us forgot how to strike back out at the devil. And the Bible says, resist him and he will flee. Give a little praise in the house. Paul had longed for his son in the gospel. See, Timothy's companionship with Paul had been disjointed because Paul had been arrested. Oh, my God. Give me some water, son. Give me some water. Even the great apostle huh, would have possibly become lonely. Think about it. Huh? You go and nobody else feel the way you do about the Lord Jesus Christ. It can set loneliness in. Because your friends, your neighbors, your colleagues, you know the ones we were talking about yesterday, somebody brought it up yesterday, is that as long as you provide the drink and food, they're your friend. As long as you let them a, a a piece of that Kit Kat bar, I'm talking about money now. As long as you get breaking them off a piece, uh, they're your friend. Uh, my God, but as soon as things start evaporating in your life, uh, they're going to start running away like roaches do when you turn on the light. Uh, <laughs> my God, you won't see them no more. 
My God, you better get some raid up so they don't come back. Huh? And your raid's going to be the word of God. Huh? You don't need friends like that. Huh? They are called leeches. They ain't roaches. They leeches. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody know what I'm talking about. I don't need no water with you. We thank the Lord. <laughs> my God. Hallelujah. I feel my help coming on. Thank Hallelujah. You, Hallelujah. But we try to get to a point huh, where we're so faithful in the things of God. Huh, things can be hitting you from the right, huh, from the left, huh, from the back of you and the front. Huh, but look to the hills which come in your help. Huh, and all your help coming from the Lord. Huh. But see, Paul had to encourage this young man in the gospel. Huh? And he knew that Timothy had boldness in him huh? to be faithful huh? and told him to continue on. Huh? See, you can get very unfaithful huh? when nobody else is praising God. Huh? You, you, you think something wrong with you. Huh? No, ain't nothing wrong with you. You in the right place. Just be faithful. Huh? Stop being fearful. Huh? When everybody else going to the wide gate, huh? go to the narrow. I wish I had somebody because I'm in the Bible. Paul encourages Timothy to stay faithful through adversity. Fan the flames. He told him to fan the flames. Fan the flames. Anybody ever started a fire and you start the fire just to get it to burn faster so it won't go out? What you do? Fan it. So that blaze will come up. See, some of us don't fan the flames of what God has put in us. How many got the Holy Ghost in yes, here? Yes. If you got the Holy Ghost, you got enough to, to fan the flames. Hallelujah. Stop backing down. Stop backing up. Huh? When the devil says you can't do it, say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You stand on what God has promised you. God is faithful. He's just waiting for us to be faithful. We got any faithful people in here today. Amen. Paul was faithful. Even in prison. And later being beheaded. Y'all got to understand. He offended the, he, he defended the gospel. And he was shipwrecked. He was jailed. He was chased and then beheaded. For the cause of the gospel. Oh my God. And he had a thorn in his flesh. He didn't do this without. You know. Being on easy street. Oh, I serve the Lord as soon as I get a car, as soon as I get some money, as soon as I get some clothes, as soon as I find out where the church is. They don't say that part. But everybody makes excuses. You can have a million excuses and not one good reason. Somebody better hear what I'm saying. You can have a million excuses but not one good reason to not stand before God of the things we may be lacking in, the things that we need, and being trustworthy of carrying what God has given us. We have gifts that God has given to us. It's time to stir up that gift instead of looking for more. We can't even take care of what God has given us. We got to fan the flames. Don't let the fire go out. Anybody ever lit a gas stove? Then all of a sudden it don't light? That's because the pilot is out. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, is your pilot light still lit? Is your pilot light still lit? Fan the flames. So it'll burn a blaze again. Somebody need to catch on fire. That's what Paul was telling Timothy. Timothy, continue on so others can catch on fire. Timothy, continue on in the things of God. Be faithful in the things you've been taught. Some of us forget. Some of us were brought up in church. If you black, you brought you were brought up in somebody's church. I don't care if it's Baptist, Methodist, or whatever. One faith, one Lord, one baptism. And that is unto Jesus Christ, our Lord. We make too many excuses. Because we are in fear. But who gave you that fear? Because the word of God said. God had not given us. The spirit of fear. Thank you, but a power. And of love. And of a sound mind. You and I got power. We have power. We have that dunamis power. I'm talking about that unshakable power. I'm talking about that power that's like dynamite. We have that miraculous power 
of the Lord and we have the love of God. You know why I know that? You should know that. I know you know it. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And then guess what? God gave us a sound mind. In fact, he didn't just give it to us. He renewed our minds. He renewed it. We shouldn't be thinking like the old us. We got to be thinking in the light of God. The things that God has put in us now. Because the word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What about you on today? Are you being fearful or are you being faithful? Ask yourself, don't answer it for me. Ask yourself this question. Have you been faithful in the things of God? Well, Pastor, I don't know what those things are. That's why you need to be in Bible study, Sunday school, so you can learn of him so when you study it on your own, these things resonate. But the only, only things that's going to help you resonate and understand the things of God, the, the things that were written, the things that were written are spiritual. You must be born again. You must have the Holy Ghost. Or you will not understand. You'll understand from a literal sense. But the spiritual things of God will not be revealed to you until you get filled with the Holy Spirit. I wish I had somebody today to just say amen. And amen. you know I'm right. Amen. Because the Bible makes it right. Let us stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord on today. Anybody ready to be more faithful to God? Instead of being fearful. Stop letting the devil run you. Tell you you ain't going to make it. Tell you nah, not. Nobody like you. Ain't nobody in your family ever made it. Ain't not, nobody in your family ever done anything special. Nobody in your family. In, in, fa in fact. Your mama was this and your daddy was that. That ain't you. I was a sinner. You were a sinner until God saved us. Million excuses. No good reason. Not one. Amen. Amen. Can we give the Lord a praise in the house? God is trying to release somebody into faithfulness. And taking the fear out of us. We all have a degree of fear. If we say we don't. Then my God I, I want to meet you. But I'm telling you God didn't give us that spirit. That, that spirit of fear did not come from God. It came from the enemy. The devil. Now it's imputed in our flesh. And the only thing that will save us from that. The flesh is the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Because, again, I keep saying this stuff going right back where it came from, the dirt. But the Spirit of God must dwell in us. We got to look at our lifestyles. Thank God I don't have to be the judge and put you in hell or heaven. Neither does God. Guess who judges put you in hell? You do. It is, it is not God's desire that that man should perish. That's why he sent his son. But we have a choice to make. To be fearful of God. I'm talking about reverencing him. Or be fearful. Locked in fear. Because of the enemy. Choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. Who are you going to serve? Don't back up. Don't back down. You're going to go through some things. We're going through some things. We're going to be afflicted with some things, but God is still good. I wish I had somebody. I'm going through things right now, but I, it ain't about me. Amen. I still had to show up and preach. It ain't about me. My God, we show up for work. Amen. Not like it. Nobody at work. And smile at them. Good morning. <laughs> 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 How you doing this morning? It's so good to see you. Mine. <laughs> good to be here. Mine. 
in most cases. Some people love their job. Okay, we thank the Lord for them. But I'm talking about most of the time, you still go and be with people you don't want to be around. Mm -hmm. The majority of your, guess what? You're around people that don't care nothing about you sometimes. But guess what? We're faithful. We're faithful to them. Mm. We're faithful. Why? To the employer. We're faithful. Why? We're going to get that paycheck in two weeks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got the benefits. Man, I don't want to lose my bennies, man. <laughs> don't call them benefits no more. My bennies, man. <laughs> I don't want to lose. I got good bennies. <laughs> but the benefit of being faithful. Well, mm. I'll believe that God will provide you with the job, with the well, greatest so benefit, horrendous. and he will put favor, which they can't include in their benefit. I wish I, <laughs> I wish I, they can't include that in their benefit package. I'm talking about the kind of favor that don't seem fair to other people. But because of your faithfulness, God said, you know what? They've been good over little things. I'll make a rule over it. What you mean I'm, I'm the new supervisor, the new manager? What, what you mean you're going to give me a bonus? What you what? See, as long as we are in that job, and I'm telling you, I don't like my job, but I work unto the Lord. Y'all get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't make it hard for nobody else on that job. In fact, I'm telling you, they tell me this. When I'm not there, they miss me. Now, they could be lying. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you right now work unto the Lord no matter how you feel about that job and I tell people what you do for Christ is the only thing that's going to last everything else is going to be burned out so you can make it look good for the pastor as I say I ain't got no heaven to put you in or hell to put you in you can, you can look good for two hours in front of the saints of God. But whatever you're doing, you're doing un, unto the Lord. And we have to do it with faithfulness. Making sure that we are pleasing God and not man. Anybody here today that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins, I want you to come now. So we can pray with you and pray for you. Come now. Come now. Don't be fearful. Be faithful that God will do it and he can do it out there Facebook the same it's someone that's under the sound of my voice looking for a savior looking for a Lord that can oversee and guide your life come to Jesus on this afternoon come to Jesus we know you can't physically walk here but again I always say call me call me I will work with you. I'll pray with you. My God. Hallelujah. Just as God has no respect of person, you don't have to be a member here or somebody that knows us as long as I help you get to know Jesus. Hallelujah. Anybody right now need prayer for anything, I want you to come now. I don't care what it is. If you need prayer, come now. We are earnestly pray with you and pray for you. Come now. Don't be fearful. Get that thing off your back. Whatever it is. Whatever it is, come now. And I know God already revealed to me some people are here dealing with some things. You know why I don't have to be a prophet to know that? Brother Hill, everybody's going through something. And sometimes, says Chantel, we keep it because we become comfortable with it. And we don't want nobody else to know what, I, what we're going through. But the Bible said, if they're sick among us, call the elders of the church to lay hands. Hey, I can't, I can't heal your sickness, but I'm the conduit that helps God connect with your belief that he can free you from whatever you're going through. It don't have to be sickness. Come now. Come now. We thank the Lord. Come now.